Smart contract hacking is one of the most in-demand skills that blockchain developers can possess. Whether you want to become a security auditor, a white hat hacker, you know, hunt bug bounties on the side, or just become a better blockchain developer, there's a tremendous amount of upside to understanding security vulnerabilities inside of smart contracts, you know, how to exploit them. Of course, not so that you can take this money for yourself. I don't advocate that on this channel at all but so that you can disclose it to other people and get rewarded for doing this. And trust me, there's a massive upside for this. I've talked about stories on my channel of developers who've made a million dollars in a single day for disclosing these vulnerabilities. It's absolutely crazy. But if you want to learn this, then you need to have the right technical skills. And today I'm going to give you an introduction on how to do that with some live coding challenges. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master in 2022, then the Blockchain Bootcamp is the best way to do that. And I'm super excited to announce the Blockchain Bootcamp version 2.0 that's launching on Thursday, July 14th. So make sure you hold your spot at the link down below today. All right, so let's jump into this. You know, of course, smart contract hacking, like I was saying before, is one of those lucrative skills in the blockchain field. You can look on websites like ImmuneFi to see multiple bounties here in the six and seven figure range or websites like Code Arena. All right, this is a $1 million bounty for the OpenSea Seaport Contest. And people ask me all the time, like, hey, how can I do this? How can I actually learn these skills? Well, first and foremost, you need to understand the fundamentals of the programming language. Actually, you need to master the programming languages. So that's step one, basically learning solidity, the ins and outs. But then the next step is to actually develop this next skill on top of that, which is understanding smart contract vulnerabilities. So you really just have to understand how to think like a bad guy. How do I break something and manipulate the code to get something that it's not really intended to do? So for some people, this is like a bit of a natural skill of thinking outside the box, but it definitely can be learned, okay? And so how do you learn it? Well, essentially, the easiest way to learn it is to look at past, you know, vulnerabilities that have happened. So you can look to see other, you know, smart contracts that have been exploited before, see what happened there, and see if you can find that same pattern in other places. It's just pattern recognition. And the more times you see this, the more you'll see, oh, this code's not supposed to do this or that. And you might be able to find a vulnerability that way. And so you can also do that by going through code challenges that are designed to show you exactly what a security vulnerability looks like so that you can reason through it and then actually code out solutions to break the smart contracts. And so today I want to introduce you to a resource called Damn Vulnerable DeFi that has a set of challenges that you can work through that's going to show you what security vulnerabilities look like in smart contracts. And then you can reason through them and try to implement solutions to actually break them and exploit those vulnerabilities. So what I want to do right now is actually show you how to set it up and work through some of those solutions together so that you can get the most out of this resource. All right, so head on over to damnvulnerabledefi.xyz to see a list of all the challenges that are going to teach you all these smart contract vulnerabilities so that you can learn to, you know, hack and audit and all that type of stuff. So there's 13 challenges here from the unstoppable all the way to the junior miners, okay? Let's go ahead and see how to, you know, look at this. You can click on any of the challenges and see the description of this scenario. So there's a lending pool with a million uh, DVT tokens in it, and it'll show you how to take the tokens out of the pool. So that's the vulnerability. So, you know, each challenge has uh, some GitHub code that you can link to, and all you have to do is clone the GitHub repository, uh, check out this latest version, install the dependencies, and then run a script to see if you can complete the challenge. So I'll walk you through how to do that right now. Let's just go to the first challenge. Okay, you can see the contracts here on GitHub. All right, let's go to the parent repository uh, right here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just copy this link and go to my terminal here. And I'm saying git clone. I'm going to paste in uh, the URL. All right, so I've already done this, so it's going to give me the error. But whenever you clone it for the first time, you should see the correct, you know, success message. So I'll enter into that newly created directory like this. Say cd damn vulnerable DeFi. Okay. And then what you want to do is make sure that you are on the correct uh, tag. So you can see the, you know, uh, steps here, how to play, clone the repository. We just did that. Check out the latest version with git checkout version uh, 2.1.0. So let's go ahead and copy this. So git checkout. So git checkout version 2.1.0. Okay. So now I've switched to that uh, tag here. All right. Now we want to install the dependency with yarn like this. Say yarn install or just yarn for short. All right, I've already done it, so mine finished pretty quickly, but if you're doing it the first time, it'll take you a second for your dependencies to install with Yarn. If you're not familiar with Yarn, it's a package manager for uh, JavaScript. Uh, works a lot like Node.js with some slight differences, but that's what you're doing there. You're just installing all the project-specific dependencies. So uh, how do you play this? Well, basically, there's a set of challenges inside of the project, so I'm going to open it in my text editor like this. I mean, Sublime Text. You can use whatever text editor you'd like. But basically, you've got all the scenarios that are listed here on the website. 
all right, from, you know, unstoppable all the way down to the junior minors. And you can see the description for the scenario here, but you can also see the code for it inside of the uh, project. So if you go to the contracts, you can see that there are contracts for unstoppable. This is the first challenge right here. Okay. And basically you can see the contracts that are you know part of this. All right. And then you can see a test here um, that corresponds to the scenario as well. So I can open this uh, test here on unstoppable to see the challenge. And this is the setup for the challenge. Okay. We'll go over this here in a minute, but basically uh, there's a test here that makes sure that, that it passes. Okay. And then there's a placeholder here to actually run the exploit. And what you do is you exploit the contract inside of here. Basically, you code the solution uh, to the scenario inside this test example, and you run it, and, you know, it'll pass uh, or it'll fail, right? So basically, I'm just going to say uh, console.log my solution goes here, all right? And then essentially, um, you know, per the instructions, what you do, is you just say a uh, yarn, okay, and then you give it the name, all right? So you'll see, uh, you know, basically yarn and then the challenge name. So yarn run, so yarn run, and then we're doing the unstoppable challenge, unstoppable. And that's gonna run the test to see if it passes. The first time you run this, it'll probably download the compiler, okay? So might you might see a little more output here the first time you do it. I've already done that, so it skipped that step. But um, yeah, you can see that the challenge for Unstoppable has run. You can see my console logging statement that I just added. My solution goes here, logged to the console, and you can see that the exploit passed. Um, but the you know the after all hook that checked to see if the solution right did not pass. What you want to do is actually write the code to make it happen, and then put it inside of here, and then satisfy it. So let's see how to do that. So first of all, let's just go back to the challenge. All right, so Unstoppable, and let's look at the overview. So what are we supposed to do? So there is a lending pool with a million damn vulnerable DeFi or DVT tokens in the balance. So offering flash loans for free. So if you look here at this page, uh, you go to the smart contracts inside the scenario, you have this uh, unstoppable lender. So this is a liquidity pool where people can deposit tokens, all right, ostensibly for some sort of DeFi application with this function here, deposit tokens. And this just becomes a giant reservoir where people can take out flash loans with this function right here, okay? So there's already a million uh, DVT tokens inside of it. So inside of the challenge, you can see here, uh, essentially, we've got uh, this setup where we take you know, some accounts here, all right? We've got some tokens here. And then we deploy um, the pool to the blockchain and we deposit some tokens. All right. So you can see basically um, we get the factory here, the lender. All right. And also the token. Okay. That's what, how you do an Ethers.js. So if you're not familiar with how to use Ethers.js, definitely go check out the documentation on how to do that. I've got lots of other tutorials on my channel that show you how to do this exact thing. But the high level essentially is that we are deploying uh, the token, the DVT token, and also the lender, which is the liquidity pool to the blockchain. Okay. Right here. We do token deploy and then pool deploy. Okay. And then we take some tokens. We approve them. All right. And then we call this deposit tokens function and then add them to this liquidity pool right here to this deposit tokens function. All right. And then essentially, you know, this is going to let people take out flash loans on the other side by calling this flash loan function. And so what does it do? Well, this flash loan function, uh, you know, lets people borrow tokens to do whatever they want in their smart contract. And then it gets paid back in the same transaction with this uh, receive flash, sorry, receive tokens function, which you can see uh, implemented in the receiver right here. So here's the second contract that actually talks to it. Okay. So this is receiver unstoppable. Uh, basically, you know, it calls this receive tokens. So it, it calls execute flash loan, which does the flash loan. And here's the callback function receive tokens that it gets that it does after the flash loan, uh, you know, it is completed. So uh, you can see that inside of here. All right. So the challenge. So you can see um, the receiver contract is deployed to the blockchain right here. And then the receiver contract is deployed right here. All right. So here's here's the factory and then here's the deployment. And then here we do execute flash loan. And so what we want to do is basically break it so that it does not actually execute the flash loan. So you can see that in the instructions here. So basically there's a lending pool with this many tokens on it. We covered that. It offers flash loans for free. If there's only a way to attack the pool and stop it from offering flash loans, so your goal here is not necessarily to steal any money. Basically, your goal here is just to keep it, just break it, like keep it from working. And this is a security vulnerability 
that would cause, you know, uh, a contract to stop working in production. And this is something that people will want to disclose. So how do you do this? Well, for in all these challenges, you're going to be operating as the attacker here. You can see that at the bottom of the page, you have an account called attacker. Okay. Um, you know, listed here or as a deployer, some user, and then the attacker. And what you want to do is act as the attacker. Okay. In your code solution here. So you can see that the attacker um, has been credited with some tokens. So initial tokens, you have 100 tokens, as you can see in the instructions here. So you start with 100 DVT tokens, and the contract has a million DVT tokens, as described right here. So what you want to do, essentially, is look through the code and see if there's any clues as to how you could keep this from uh, actually offering the flash loans. And so here's where the skill comes into play, okay? This is where you read through all this and try to find, hmm, how could I stop this from doing what it's supposed to? And so ultimately, what does it do? You have to understand how the contract works in the first place. So, you know, it does two things. It lets people deposit tokens into the pool with the deposit tokens function, and then it lets people take out flash loans. So how do you stop the flash loan function from working? Well, I'll just go ahead and give you the solution. So essentially... You can see the vulnerability here is actually on line 40. So you can see this assert pool balance equals balance before. Okay, so ensure that the protocol uh, via deposit tokens function. Well, this is the real smell because you're checking for equality right here when really you should be checking for probably something like, you know, greater than or equal to uh, rather than strict equality. Because what it's doing is checking to see if the, what the pool balance is be versus the pool balance before. Okay, and pool balance before. Okay, uh, basically just checks the balance of this contract, all right? And, you know, they have the deposit tokens function that essentially updates that amount. So pool balance equals pool balance, you know, plus amount, which you can see is stored in a state variable here. But it doesn't account for people actually, you know, you know increasing the, the value without ca calling the deposit tokens function. So basically, somebody could just transfer tokens to this and that would actually change the value and break the entire system. So that's the solution for this. So how do you how do you do that? Well, you go inside the challenge here and then inside your solution, you essentially would just transfer tokens out of your wallet uh, without calling the uh, you know deposit tokens function straight to the smart contract and that's going to break the equality uh, condition that you see right here. Okay. So Let's go ahead and code that out. I'm going to take away this line here, okay? And I'm just going to say, uh, await this dot token. All right, then we can connect. And we can say attacker. All right, because that's the attacker uh, account here. Okay? And then we can say transfer. That's just going to call the transfer function directly on the token itself rather than the deposit tokens function. And we could say, um, let's find the pool address. So let's see here, this.pool.address, okay? So this.pool.address. And then let's pass in, you know, some tokens. Let's just say, I don't know, 10. You've got 100 in your wallet. It doesn't matter. You could probably just do one, all right? But yeah, just some amount. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and run the, run the test. So we can do yarn run unstoppable, and let's see if it passes. All right, boom, there we go. It works. So whenever you successfully complete a solution, you'll see uh, the test passing here and this nice green success message. All right, so that's an overview of how to start hacking smart contracts with damn vulnerable DeFi. You know, we just played through the first lesson here. If you want to see more videos like this, playing through more lessons in this or just more topics about security vulnerabilities and how to actually learn them, again, there's a huge upside to these skills. Let me know down in the comment section below. And of course, this is a much more advanced like Solidity tutorial and blockchain development skill. And in order to get to this level, you first and foremost need to understand the ins and outs of the Solidity programming language and how to write Ethereum smart contracts and how to become a blockchain developer. So the best way to do that is definitely go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those, or hey, let's say you just want to cut the throat and learn real world blockchain skills beyond just those tutorial level challenges, then definitely head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. You'd have to be an expert to get started right now. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.